Welcome back guys to Last Oasis. We already covered our walker. Now we have left is uh, obviously our base. So for the walker, just a quick review. It's have a couple of clan flags at the front. To be exact, probably over 600. Uh, chests at the front. Uh, sneaky sneaky chests in the bottom, which I might even show you. And then obviously heaps of gripple, grapples at the back to get in. And it's quite easily the reason there's grapples on the sides because of the different terrain. Uh, walker can be on a weird angle and um, having more grapples give you more chances to get inside it. You don't need them to get inside, you can quite easily leave, reach the actual handles uh, just by grappling up and crouching. So we're going to head over to our spot and uh, have a quick review of uh, our base and let us know if you like it. So here we go, this is our base. As you can see it's just a 4x4. Uh, free high, right? So toboggan holds 200 building blocks, right? When they talk building blocks, they're talking about actual hard panels. Stuff like chests, crafting stations, and everything else. It does not actually take spots, but it takes time to unpack, right? Uh, we're gonna go for worst case scenario. Uh, what happens most of the time, you had your base inside your walker, it's got destroyed, and they're putting the base out. Most of the people, what they do, they put the base out, and then they put the base up high as high as they possibly can. Obviously there's a bit of uneven terrain, but I did my best here. And what they would do, they would put ballista around this area somewhere here and just start shooting stride into your supports, wiping your foundations, right? If you got 4x4, four four, that's what, 16, 16 uh, foundations they have to destroy before they get all the loot and completely destroy your base. So I'm not sure exactly how the, um, I suppose, architecture works in this game. If it destroys all the foundations or if you have, for example, these foundations on the side here, everything going to collapse anyway because the foundations is unstable on the other side. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, I can't really tell you. But from having my base uh, wiped, what I've done, uh, I put these extra foundations on the bottom. They do take up the spot, but now, instead of raiding a 4x4, four four, they essentially have to raid almost a 6x6. Six six. All, all you can see, I'm only missing a four, 4 foundations to do that. So, that's really nice addition to that. So that's pretty important. Uh, the second thing is the honeycomb, right? I decided my outer layers is going to be two, 2 walls, essentially. So, what it is, this is just a wall, so oh, Jesus, I don't know if I can even get in there. Oh, that did not work. Anyway, let's let's look from the hill. We'll just look from the hill. It'll be easier just to try to get up. So, as you can see at the top, it's all honeycombed. So it doesn't matter if they start shooting from here, or start shooting from here, or anywhere else. It's all going to be two doors, like two walls to get in, right? And it's symmetrical from all the sides, which just kind of looks cool. I also have four doors. Four doors do require extra three panels, right? And I have them on each side. That's so you don't get stuck. You can't get camped. Uh, it's all airlocked. You can trap people inside them. I had person trapped in one of these uh, airlocks when I was building the base because we got attacked. Uh, all I did, I opened the thing. He ran behind it. I closed it. I was semi-naked. He killed me. I respawned, he was stuck in here, couldn't get out. That's one player down on the raid. If they like three man team, that's that he lost he lost his time, he might have to kill himself. It's gonna be at least 30 seconds before he respawns, he lost a set of gear and so on and so on. So I got four of those on each side. That makes it entering and exiting the base as incognito as possible. So I can essentially uh, grab my loot and um, escape, right? This is that thing. Uh, next thing uh, is inside. So let's have a geese inside. So we get enter it and straight up we see that on the first floor we have no loot. So we have all these stomping stations here. Just making water out of corn, got a couple of bottles and some rupa slingers, right? Here they are on the ground floor. And you can easily run around them, there's heaps of space. 
what I've done here, like I, like I said, I don't know how architecture works exactly. I have these supports in the bottom. This is the walls. So a whole entire thing can possibly sit on that and also supported by the panels on the sides there, right? So to wipe this bit in the middle, they have to destroy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten panels after they semi got into this. So, so that's another support for the loot room, all right? Uh, the plan is to put my furnaces here because obviously they generate the smoke and there's enough space to mask that. So I'm just getting resources to actually do that. Uh, as you can see on the second floor, in each corner there's more Rupus, so if they get in, they potentially have to deal with the four Rupus staring in their face. Alright, so this is pretty deadly. Inside I have a quality station stuff here. Uh, obviously fires inside to mask the light as much as possible. Uh, we want to generate as low a signature on the ground as possible by having almost no light. So that works pretty well. Um, it is a lot harder to see them at night. Uh, obviously, stomping stations on the bottom can also be accessed from the top. If I stand, let's say here, uh, you can select them pretty easily, like they, they're all there, right? And then it brings us to the main loot room. I didn't go for a ridiculous amount of chests. Uh, I think less chests you have, less stuff you hold. As you can see, two of them already taken by corn, and just a couple of other things in the other chests. Um, the big thing with this game, when you unpack the base, it can be seen, right? It's all see-through. Uh, a person can just see the base and go, yep, sweet. Uh, this is essentially got four chests, five chests, a million chests, you know. They can see exactly where to attack. If you have a weak spot, it will be very easily be picked up by looking at the base through when it's in the white see-through mode, right? Uh, when it comes to this, this is literally three walls minimum to get to five chests and then even when you get to the chests it'll be a lot of effort to actually deal with the chests because the way it's set up you can't really get to this my approach to this is to maximize the resources and make it as hard as possible to raid if you have a two by two uh, with two walls raid or three walls raid or you know a couple of bases wipe so you can wipe full entire base most likely people are going to actually go and try and do this if they're going to see something like this with the minimal chests inside for very little reward they're probably not going to waste their time and sit there waiting for the walls to burn because as you can see it is three walls to the actual main vault i suppose uh let us know what you guys think uh tell us if you have any improvements if you think there's um, other things you can do uh, this base is exactly 200, uh, 200 um, building blocks and um, I think it's pretty bang on to the money. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how effective the bottom bit here to support the structure but from what I've seen so far I think it's safe to say if you better overdo it than underdo it because I won't put all this effort building everything on outside just so my foundations can be wiped in the middle and whole entire thing collapses. So this is the base door. Um, it's pretty basic at the moment. I spend a little bit time living in it. So far it's been really good. It's we've held a couple of uh, actual raids as well. So it haven't been destroyed. It's really easy to repair. And uh, to be honest, when people look at this monstrosity, uh, they think twice, that's for sure. So uh, if you want, give us a like and uh, Stay tuned for more cool uh, Blast Oasis videos.